Okay. Good evening and welcome to our B tonight on careers and employment by Brother Shem. We're going to open our night with hymn 137 to be followed by prayer. Pray. O gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this night of opportunity to gain perspective on the truth of your word and be encouraged to walk in the life of your Son alongside our lives outside. Please guide our brother Shem tonight in your ways that what he's prepared may make an impact in our lives with how we think and how we breathe. Be with brother Greg and sister Lorinda and our guest speakers as they lead alongside us the reading, playing of your word and expanding of their lives. May you, Lord, please help us tonight to consider faithfully the role employment and careers plays in our lives and service to you, that we might each for ourselves evaluate how we live. May you, our God, bless this meeting and all its members, both tonight and always. In Jesus' name, amen. invite Brother Greg Patterson to read Luke 3, verse 1 to 14, before Brother Shem will continue from there. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Reading the first 14 verses of Luke chapter 3. Now, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea, and of the region of Traconius, and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene, Annas and Caiaphas, being the high priests, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he came into all the country about Jordan, 
preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. And the crooked is able to, of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth forth not forth good fruit, is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answereth and saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Then came also the publicans to be baptised, and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Angus. And thanks, everyone, for coming out tonight. It's good to see you all on a cold, wintry night. Um, so tonight we are speaking careers, which um, is the, as some smart Alex have pointed out already, it's not the north and south type, it's the, um, the jobs careers that we're talking about tonight. And it's something that um, affects us all, and something that we all have to deal with as um, disciples of Christ. Careers are very much part of um, each and every one of our daily lives, and we all have to make decisions about it on a um, fairly routine basis. And, um, you know, even, even the, the younger ones amongst us are thinking about careers, potentially thinking about careers, or maybe should be thinking about careers, um, at this stage, but even us um, older ones who are who have done their learning, done their schooling, um, thinking about your career and where um, how it fits into your life at the at the moment um, and at the time, how it fits into um, uh, yeah the stage of life and the stage of um, y your relationship with God as well is a good thing to take stock of um, fairly regularly as well, just to see where you're going and how you fit in and, and how things run with you. And um, so I thought tonight um, we're, we're just going to talk fairly generally at the start about careers the Bible talk about that we shouldn't do and then we're not going to talk about careers the Bible should do because that's, well, I mean, it doesn't, that, that's fairly broad and generic. So we're going to talk about Bible's um, careers the Bible suggests not to do. Then we're going to talk about some principles and how those principles might impact some of our career choices. And then at the end, we're going to have um, three other people come up and um, speak about um, their different career paths and how, um, you know, the challenges and benefits that they've seen with living the truth in their career path. So to kick us off... Um, is, can anyone think of any careers that the Bible, consistently across um, Old and New Testament, kind of says, this is, this is not one for Christ believers? Is there any careers anyone can think of? Greg? What's that? Law enforcement. Law enforcement. Uh, yes, I'm going to put that... I'm going to put that over this side um, as <coughs> 
because I think that's more a principle than, than it says don't be a policeman in the Bible, um, that type of thing, because they didn't... Well, I mean, I guess the, the soldiers um, were essentially the policemen of the Roman Empire. Um, but a, any others? Army? Yep, I'm also going to put that over here. And the reason I'm going to put that over there is because, yes, um, we read about that in Luke, but there was many other believers um, who were in the army, um, particularly in David and Israel's time, and that type of thing. Any, any others? Um, let me just go through. I had witches. Witchcraft is definitely something um, across... Or practicing witchcraft. I don't think we don't think we know any other believers that were that would. Yep, yep. Priests of Baal. Can I extend that and kind of say false religion as well? I think that's how you spell religion. Yes, yep, sorry. Exodus, I had Exodus 23 to 13. Yep, uh, yep, so harlot. I would probably, can I, I, I would, yes, that, I agree with that. I'm going to put like illegal and immoral just general, illegal, I'm going to put that under general, illegal and immoral. Um, practices, because, um, you know, like pirate, robber, mafia boss, drug lord would all kind of fit under, fit under that. Sorry, Xavier, for taking away your <laughs> being a pirate. Uh, any others? Uh, yeah, so it talks about um, usury, lending with usury. Is that? Yep. <laughs> yep, we'll come to that one. Um, any others? Oh, illegal and immoral. I had a quote next to that one. I think that's prostitutes, that one, and illegal would be Titus 3.12. Any others? The only other one I had was doing nothing. That's a career path that, that, that people do choose. Um, and that is Second Thessalonians three, three verse ten. Uh, I think it's the labourers worthy of their hides. Um, yeah, the uh, Bible pretty consistently talks about we should be keeping ourselves busy. So there's not a whole lot of um, ones where we're explicitly told. Thou shalt not do. Thou shalt not do these career paths. Um, thou shalt not do these things. So um, they're kind of the explicit ones that we can deal with, and we can put to one side. And um, hopefully, hopefully, none of us uh, um, have any issues with any of those ones. I can I can certainly add to politics and for the ambitious PM as well. All right.
So that, that's kind of the explicit, let's, let's, let's stick away from these ones, um, kids or um, adults. Now let's talk about um, some principles as well. We've got some guiding principles um, in the Bible, which, talks, which deals with other um, careers. And I wouldn't, you know, it's not saying uh, do not do these ones, but it is saying uh, think very carefully about these, these um, how these principles impact your life or could potentially impact your life um, in a career or a job that you choose. I'm going to do a Jamie and I'm going to start at Genesis and work our way forward. Um, I think, I think the, the, the number one overriding factor um, of, you know, the first kind of employment that God gave anyone um, was in Genesis 1, 27 to 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and God said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish in the sea, over the birds and heavens and over the living thing, every living thing that moves on the earth. And so our primary, our primary role, our primary job before any other employment that we take, our primary job is to create others that are in the image of God. And this isn't kind of... And when we talk about image, it's not just shape. It's also about the character of God. So we're looking to create people who have the same characteristics or look like God, have the same family name of God, if you like. And so this is kind of one of our overriding things. And, and, and to God, God said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. You know, have kids. That's kind of a good role for the first man and, man and woman. Otherwise, it would be a short-lived plan to have kids. Um, you know, like we, not all of us have the opportunity to have kids um, or, or necessarily even have a family. But that role is still there for us to be fruitful, to multiply, to create other people who have the image of God. That, it doesn't matter if you don't have a family, you can do that in other ways, plenty of other ways, through preaching, through, um, through God's Word, bringing people into the truth, working with nieces, nephews or um, neighbours or however that might be. None of us have an excuse not to have this as our overriding, overarching um, mission in life, is that we should be helping others as well as ourselves, <laughs> to be in the image and likeness um, of, of our God who created us. And I think this, this can impact our career choices. Um, is there any careers th that you can think of that this might impact other than, you know, priests of Baal or um, false religion? Any, any others? Yep, good one. So if you, are, um, if you do have kids and you're at that stage in life and you're away from home an awful lot, that, that, that's hard to do. It's hard to do. Yeah, so extending that principle to a specific... Yep. Extending that principle to a specific uh, career path will be that FIFO kind of um, stage in, in, in a stage of life. No others? No others? Yep, all right. This is what Chris was thinking about. Uh, Exodus 22. So we're still in the law at this stage. Um, well, not still. We've just gone into the law. There wasn't a law before. But uh, Moses in Exodus says, If you lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, Thou shalt not be to him as a usurer, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. Does anyone know what usury is? Yep, Greg says interest. Um, so if, you, if you're giving someone a loan, it's uh, at the end of the day, I want that loan plus something else as well. Um, and God's saying um, that um, that shouldn't happen um, under the law. If thou at all take thy neighbour's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver unto him by that the sun goeth down. 
for that is his covering only. It's his raiment for his skin. So um, back in those days, if you um, gave people money, you could say, I want your jacket. Um, I want your jacket so that I know you'll give me the money back. And um, yeah, God's saying, don't, don't keep that on, on a day like today. Don't, don't keep the jacket from them or, or at night time, don't keep the jacket away from them. Otherwise, they'll get cold and die and you won't get your... Well, that's not actually the reason, but they, they'll get cold and die and you won't get your money back. That's not what the law is saying. It's more saying, be merciful. But you get the idea. Um, and it shall come to pass when he cries unto me that I'll hear because I'm gracious. So what's, what's the principle there? What's the principle? Girls? Girls down the front? Down the front, what's the principle there? Anything? What do you think Moses is trying to teach the people under the law there? What's he, what's he teaching them about how you treat other people? Generously. Generously. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Yep, so generous, um, hardship, oppressing people. Um, yeah, they're all kind of words that God's saying, you know, I don't want you to oppress people, particularly particularly in this case the poor, but just, just generally, don't oppress people. That's, that's not a way to generate income. It's not a way to live the truth either. Um, yep. Yep. So... D- Okay, so Tim said there um, it's taking it. What was the first bit? Taking advantage of. Yep, taking. Yep. Yep. So taking a disadvantaged person and making a profit of their and making them more disadvantaged, which um, Tim said um, was a um, typical, fairly typical of the gambling or um, casino industry that we see around us. And it can be a f- yep, absolutely if, yep, yep. There's, yeah, there's absolutely direct, you know, and, it, and it's something that if you if you choose a career in finance, it's particularly relevant in finance, and I think that's why we, it's picked up as usury. It's particularly relevant in finance that you know oppression of disadvantaged people as a disciple of Christ um, isn't isn't a way to make money. Any other careers that might impact on? I, th- I think it's um, I think it's just a gen- not just fi- not just related to finance, but general finance, general trading as well. Um, like if you if you see someone come into the shop, it's not it's this price for you, it's that price for them. You know that type of thing. It's not uh, um, you know being kind of scrupulous with with how we deal with it. Or well, actually, I, that was related to the next slide. <laughs> All right, the next side, uh, next principle we're looking at um, is honesty. Uh, still in the law, Deuteronomy 25. Don't cheat when you're using weights and measures. Use true and honest weights and measures so that you may live a long time in the land that Yahweh your God is giving you. Yahweh hates people who cheat. I think that's from the Good News translation. Uh, what's, the, what's the principle God's trying to teach the people um, in, under the law there? People, people in the first three rows. I guess Louise and Honey Lorinda, you can you can chime in as well if I don't get anything. <laughs> what, what's the principle God's trying to teach? Um, teach the people in the law there. Be honest. Be honest. Yeah. Where'd you pull that one from? <laughs> Good one, mate. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Be honest. Um, use just weights and measures. So when they when they um, when they went into the market and they measured out how much apples cost. I don't think apples is particularly growing in that 
climate, but you know, something like that. Apple figs, let's take figs. When figs are cost, they put like a this is how much gold this fig is, and they'll put the gold on here and there'll be scales. And for you know, some people they could put, you know, some people they wanted to charge more, they put a heavier weight on there, and for others that they wanted to charge less, they put a lighter weight on there. Um, is there any career, any other careers that that might impact on? <laughs> yep, Jamie's got really specific with the sand and metal industry. <laughs> He's clearly been cementing his house recently. <laughs> any other any other industries or career paths that might have an impact on? <laughs> yep, the shooting ducks carnival games. Yep, yep, yep. It's fascinating YouTube videos on how they're rigged. Yes. Deceptive packaging. So that would, like marketing is that more like broadly as like a marketing be be honest and that type of thing. It's Yep. Sales. Yep. So like selling cars or anything, anything really? Yep, yep. Uh, some, someone from the side is saying employees with their timesheets as well. It's, a, it's another one as well. So it's not just a career path. It's, um, it's a, general, a general workplace practice, I think, across, across multiple. Any others? No, you killed it, Aaron. That's it. We're moving on. Oh. Right. Kids must have been sick. I can't remember it, but Jamie, Jamie was saying that um, Jeb and Josh um, did a did a night on um, just weights and scales. If my explanation <laughs> certainly didn't cover it. Um, okay, the next one. This is our reading for tonight, Luke three. I, what I lo- actually, um, it's a very it's a very common um, quote that we pull up, Luke three, and a very common point we make from it, which is um, still related to tonight. Um, Luke three, if we just open it, if you're not there already, um, starts the fifteenth year of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judah, and Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Iturea. I think Greg read that better. <laughs> And the region of Trachonitis and Lysanias, the Tetrarch of Abilene, and Annas and Caiaphas, the high priests. And these are all the most amazing jobs. Or these are all the, you know, if you wanted the job of the jobs, these are kind of amazing jobs that you could have. But how does Luke say? But the word of God didn't come to any of them, it came to, to John. I think that's kind of is quite relevant um, to um, our discussions tonight because it's, you know, the, the the overriding theme and of our life is really that is that the word of God comes through us and to us and you you don't have to have a fancy job you don't have to have a spectacular resume to be able to talk about the truth to to create others in the image and likeness of God it's um, it came to John who is in the wilderness and I'm sure he was busy but I don't think he had a career. <laughs> um, Right, so he says, talking to soldiers, doesn't he? I think the interesting thing about soldiers is he he says, don't, he doesn't say, don't be a soldier, but he does say, do no violence to no man, neither accuse anyone falsely, and be content with your wages. It's hard to do as a soldier, um, but kind of he, John the Baptist, pulls the principles out um, from the law um, and the testimonies um, and kind of says, your career needs to fit these principles and needs to fit how these, how these work. Um, and so um, with the soldiers, don't do any violence, um, neither accuse falsely and be content with your wages. 
We did talk a little bit, had a few about violence up here um, already, which may have an impact on us. Um, law enforcement um, and army are the ones um, Greg pulled out. Um, that are most directly um, impacted by violence. Is there any, any others that anyone can think of? Security. Yeah, security balance is, is something that um, certainly need to um, think about. It's an it's a, it's a impact um, before you take on that role. Any others? Yeah, Greg? Some, some professional sports people get off violence. Yep, professional sports um, or just... Any sports, really, um, uh, it certainly can have an impact on violence. Yep, I think that that's all I had. But did anyone else have any others? No. Nope. All right. Primarily, our allegiance is to God. Jesus says when he's talking to Pontius Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants fight. That I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is, now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Uh, so Christ is, Christ is pulling out that the, he, he's not fighting at the time pre-crucifixion um, because his time isn't now. He's, he's not of this world. He, he has no interest in things of this world. Um, he's, of a, he's of God's time plan and works in God, God's world. Um, and so that's why, you know, he was born to be a king. That, that's, that's, why, um, that's why he, um, he, he was born created that's why he was birthed but he isn't to be a king um before um before before crucifixion um and so uh, so this has um impact on um career choices and is this angus is this what you're talking about politics and pm is that the allegiance thing yep and steve brought it out last week or the week before Steve um, brought it out as well um, with a thing um, with Defence Force. Um, some roles in Defence Force do um, require an allegiance to king and country. Any others? Louise has confidently put forward unions. <laughs> uh, do you have a do you have a swear allegiance? Jamie, you're the expert. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's that? A shop steward. Oh, right, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. Law enforcement, yep. Yep. Yep, so certain roles in the union, law enforcement, army, um, any others? Uh, yes, yes, yes. If you if you were uh, if you were uh, alien and you're coming in to be a citizen, you do have to, as part of your citizenship ceremony, do you have to swear some sort of allegiance. Another voice out to the side here. A judge. Yep. Judge, but to barristers as well. Yep. So judge does. We're not sure about barristers. We'll get back to you about that, kids. Any others? I think probably an official, an official of the Queen or someone like that would have to, probably a spy as well or something like that. 
um, as well. They were the only one, other ones I could think of that might do it, which disappointed me. I always wanted to be a spy growing up. <laughs> uh, here's another one as well. Obey authorities. Um, everyone must obey the state authorities. I think this is good news translation from Romans because no authority exists without God's permission. And the existing authorities have been put there by God. Whoever opposes the existing authority opposes what God has ordered and anyone who does so will bring judgment on himself. So this was written, well, yeah, it was written by Paul um, to the Romans at the time when um, Nero was oppressing oppressing and oppressing um, the Christians at the time there as well. So he certainly wasn't um, an emperor who was benevolent. Um, he was, you know, burning people at the stake and things like that. Um, and Paul saying, well, he was, put, he was put there by God. Um, and so I, I bow and listen to him. Is there any where this might impact... Yeah, I I felt like this was under the don't do already. Is that, sorry? Oh, okay, so they're not obeying. Right, right. Uh, so sovereign citizens, I'm not sure if it's a career path, but <laughs> yep, could have some impact. Yep. Uh, any others? The, uh, the only other one I was thinking of um, is like um, sometimes protesters can kind of in their protesting, block up streets and stuff like that, which the law says you shouldn't, it's illegal to do. Um, that was the only thing I could think of in Australia. There's, there's, there's a few overseas where um, the, oh, like our um, Iranian friends working in Turkey, there was, there's quite a few jobs that they, um, that was impacted by, by, by um, the law enforcement, the, Law in Turkey. Anyone else think of any others? Ah, uh, yes. Yep. 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 So Annie Lorinda was saying um, potentially union um, membership could um, have issues with this um, because they're kind of standing up to authority saying no, um, they want something else or some other things. that all? All right, that's the end of our principles that we had um, tonight and my computer battery lasted, so that was good. Um, can we have our panel um, come up? And so we're, we're just going to have um, Louise, Tim and Chris come up and they're going to talk about their um, different workplaces. Yeah, up the front here if you can. Um, their different workplaces, um, the challenges and benefits of um, career choices, if you like, that they have made. I need a chair as well because I think that's what all good morning morning panellists do. Have a chair and cross their legs. Yeah. Ah, uh, you can do what you like. I don't mind. <laughs> What's that? Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, streamers. Um, you haven't got much warning, but you've got about thirty seconds to get down here because. <laughs> <laughs> Because Chris is talking a lot of hate about his workplace and doesn't want it streamed. <laughs> um, so, the first thing, first thing, just to give people, 